Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. Written by Jess Keating, illustrations by Marta Alvarez Miggins. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Suzanne. Let's start a reading adventure together. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me again today as we start a new reading adventure about a shark lady. And this is the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the world's most fearless scientist. And this was written by Jess Keating and illustrations are by Marta. Let's find out about this shark lady, why don't we? This book was written for Let's see her name again. Jess Keating's parents for encouraging her big as a whale shark dreams and to Kathleen for helping me reach them and for their friends. Look at all the different sharks, my friends. I see a great white. I see Atlantic cod. That's not a shark. What are they doing? I see whale sharks and nurse sharks. Oh, and a blunt nose sig sig signal shark. Oh, wow. There's all kinds of different sharks, but there's also some fish there, which is interesting. If you see one that you really like, you should ask your mom and dad to help you look it up and see what it looks like in real life and maybe a little bit of information about where it lives and what it eats. Let's find out about our shark lady. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. Put your finger on your nose if you've ever been to an aquarium. They're pretty cool. They have all kinds of fishes and jellyfishes and shells and all kinds of things for you to see. And I guess Eugenie really likes the aquarium. She wanted, to, she wanted the smell to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals. I bet you can't guess what it is. That's right, it's the sharks. That was her favorite animal. Wow, look at this aquarium. This is amazing. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with the sharks, to breathe underwater with gills of her own? The lines on the sides of the sharks there, that's their gills. That's how they breathe in the water. More than anything, anything at all, she wanted to find out. Hmm, I see all kinds of sharks. She must be pretending this is the ocean floor. <laughs> when the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum in her ears to keep the water out, ew, Eugenie drove down, down, down. Instead of gum, we can get earplugs instead, right, my friends? Yes, we never stick gum in our ears. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish, so she kept them open. Constellations of sea stars speckled the pebbled sand. Those are at the bottom of the picture. See the sea stars? She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back. I see it there. Slicing through the ocean current. The current is what moves everything at the bottom of the ocean around. And that's what we have to be careful of when we go to the beach, because sometimes the current can be very strong and pull us. Two other sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove... Oh, where's she going to dive now? <gasps> this time into books. Oh, look at that. She's in the library. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know all about them. She also joined the Queen's County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Ooh, fancy. Eugenie's notebooks were filled with sharks. She's drawing them and everything. They swam in her daydreams like they are in the library. And on the margins of her pages. I think she really liked sharks. Yeah. And she's learning a lot about them too. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15-gallon tank. It's really big. Much too small for sharks. But Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, 
clownfish, and coral red snails. Oh, look at that. Look at how beautiful her tank is. Oh, I see the snails. Oh, and there's the clownfish, and there's the guppies. Oh, and I don't know what the one in the middle is, but he's a big guy. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. A sanctuary means she's saving animals too. As she grew older, many were still feeling, telling Eugenie what to do. Forget about those sharks. Be a secretary. Be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, learning about animals. But some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the ocean. And they said that sharks were mindless monsters, that they don't even have a brain, that they just go around eating everything. But Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. That's the biggest shark. So again, Eugenie dove. Look at her face. She is determined. She's like, oh, no. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. So she plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow. There she is, even at nighttime when it's dark. How they behave, so why they do what they do, right? She wants to know that too. And how they were put together, both inside and out. So she has to know, it's called anatomy. Everything that is a part of the fish. Despite all the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. I see one gentleman down in the front row. He doesn't look too happy. He's like, no, you still can't do it. Is Eugenie going to prove him wrong? I think she might. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. And this time she does not have gum in her ears because she learned that's not a good idea. She has on her scuba tank and she has on flippers and she has on her special gear. So let's see where she's gonna go. She went to the Red Sea. Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species. So that's three new fish that had never been seen before. So one is the Red Sea Sand Diver. That's the big, long blue one. Ooh, the one that kind of looks like a snake in the middle is a barred zinnia pipefish. Well, could be a pipe if you stretch it out long. And the last one, ooh, is a volcano triple fin. I wonder if that's because he has more fins than I've ever seen on a fish, hey? He's a very interesting color. And she discovered those. Nobody knew about those before her. That is awesome. On a research mission exploring the Palu Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. <gasps> but she wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. <gasps> She's never seen one in the ocean before, only in the aquarium. In Ilsa Majuris, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she swam through dark caves, still and silent, resting, full of resting sharks. See, look, before we thought that they had to keep swimming or they wouldn't be able to breathe, but those sharks are resting. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive because <gasps> I would not go under the water into dark caves. She is very brave. Soon they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. Because the oceans are very big. There's a lot of things in there. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. But she never forgot how many still believe that they were mindless killers. So they just eat everything. They don't even have a brain. Because of their scary reputation, that means what people think of them, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. But Eugenie knew that sharks weren't dumb or mean, and she was determined to prove everyone wrong. That's actually what she's standing in, is the jaw of a shark. You see all the teeth? They're very big. But she's like, no, 
they don't just go around eating anything and everything. They have a brain. They're very smart and they're very beautiful. And she wanted to show everybody that. Eugenie fished through her mind. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. She fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Oh, that's where she's going to try something out. Could she train a shark the same way a person trains a dog? Interesting idea. I like where her brain is going with this. Were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? This is how she's going to find out how smart they are because they can't be trained if they're not smart. And guess what? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the whole world to train sharks and even learned they could remember their training for at least two months after. Wow, that's like remembering it almost for the whole summer. That's amazing. They have to have a brain, right? Or they wouldn't remember. Yeah, man. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. Because <gasps> people are understanding the sharks better. Let's see. And this is some of the information that Eugenie actually gave us about sharks. So are they dangerous monsters? No way. There are over 400 species of sharks. And of these, only about a dozen, that's 12, are known to be dangerous to humans. And encounters are extremely rare, so it doesn't happen that often. The truth is, despite their fearsome, very scary reputation, what people think, humans are much more dangerous to sharks than they are to us. Oh, every year humans kill more than 100 million sharks. That's a lot. It's important to treat sharks with respect, but there is no need to fear them. Hmm. So sleep tight. Eugenie once swam in a cave full of peaceful resting sharks suspended in the water. <gasps> but were they really sleeping? Sharks breathe using their gills to take or extract oxygen from water. Eugenie noticed that the caves with the sleeping, that means not really sleeping, sharks, had more oxygen than norm usual. She believed that this extra oxygen would make it easier for the still sharks motionless to breathe. So they didn't need to swim to pass the water over their gills because when they're swimming, the water is going over their gills and then they're able to take the oxygen out. Before confirming this discovery, most believed that sharks had to keep swimming to stay alive. Hmm. Ah, uh, no toothbrush here. Sharks have impressive teeth, much bigger than ours, arranged in rows along their gums. These teeth are constantly being grown and moved forward in their mouths like a conveyor belt. What? So they have not just one row, another, uh, they have actual like more rows of teeth than us. And where, when we lose a tooth and we get a new one, that's our adult tooth. And that one is the last tooth we're going to get. But they keep growing them and they keep losing them and growing them and losing them. Was Eugenie afraid of sharks because of their shark teeth? No way. Oh, she was only bitten once in her whole life, and the encounter didn't happen in water. Once on her way to school, to a school visit, with the mounted jaws of a tiger shark beside her in the car, Eugenie had to stop quickly at a red light. As she reached across the street, the, the seat to stop the jaws from tumbling forward, the teeth chomped on her arm. So it wasn't even an alive shark. It was just the jaws and it just happened. Oh my goodness. Well, isn't that unreal? Now, sneaky skin. Sharks can move extremely fast in the water and the secret to their speed is their skin. Shark skin is made up of dermal denticles. I don't know what that is. I hope she explains it. Which are more like teeth than fish scales. Hmm. Some swimsuit designers have even created swimsuits that mimic shark skin to help Olympians swim faster in the water. So because of these dermal denticles, the way that the water passes over their skin allows them to swim faster. I did not know that. Dermal denticles. That's a very interesting fact. 
big, small, and everything in between. There are an incredible variety of sharks. The smallest in the world is the dwarf lantern shark at under seven inches long. Oh, wait, I have it. Let's see, seven inches. That's centimeters. So this is seven inches. So one of the world's smallest sharks is only like this big. But the world's largest, the whale shark, measures over 40 feet. That is longer than my car. Once Eugenie was swimming with these giants in the Sea of Cortez, one swam very close to her. So close, she was able to grab onto it. She actually grabbed onto it and swam with it. She let it carry her for a long time until she finally let go when she realized she was really far away from her boat. <laughs> the shark didn't turn around and take her back. <laughs> but she got to swim next to a whale shark, and they're huge. Mermaid purses. Oh, some sharks give birth to live young. That means they don't, they don't do eggs. Others, like the dogfish, produce unique egg sacs that sustain their young. These leathery sacs are known as mermaid purses. Oh, so it's the sac. And they provide the young shark embryo with a safe place to grow. Sometimes it's possible to find a mermaid's purse on the shore if you look carefully. So after the shark is done in that sack, it must break out and then go on its way. It would be very interesting to find a mermaid's purse. Hmm. Life at the top. Sharks are apex predators. Mm, that's an interesting term, apex predator. This means that they are at the top of the food chain in the ocean. Because of this, they play an important role in keeping food webs. That's all the different animals that eat different animals and, you know, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And prey populations in balance. Without sharks, the ocean ecosystem would collapse. So when we sing the slippery fish song and we sing, you know, slippery fish sliding in the water and then it gets eaten by something bigger and something bigger and something bigger, that's what a food web is. That's pretty cool, hey? <gasps> Look at that. This is Eugenie's timeline. So she was born in, on May 4th in 1922 in New York. Look at that. And then she visits the, you know, the New York Aquarium at Battery Park and sees the sh living sharks for the first time. And then she enters the Bachelor's Art in Zoology from Hunter's College. She earned that. And then she earned her master's degree in zoology. And Eugenie becomes Dr. Eugenie Clark earning her doctorate in zoology and a scholarship to study fish in the Red Sea. That's why she went to the Red Sea. And let's see, in 1999, huh, that's when I graduated high school. No, forget that. I didn't say that. Eugenie moves to Sarasota with her family and begins working at the Moat Marine Laboratory. Uh-oh. And in the 2000s, Eugenie injures her ankle on a diving expedition and is seen by doctors. They discover she has lung cancer and is treated with chemotherapy. And in 2015, Eugenie Clark passes away in her home in the company of her family. This is amazing. This is her whole life on, on these two pages from the time she was born to the time she passes away. This is amazing. In 1981, she hitched a ride on the back of a whale shark. I think sharks are actually looking way more exciting than I ever thought. And she really makes me want to learn a little bit more about sharks and find out a little bit more. So thank you, my friends, for joining me today as we read Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the world's most fearless scientist. She taught us a lot about sharks. And you can learn more with mom or dad, or even at school if you ask your teacher, they can help you. I'd like to thank you, my friends, for joining me today on our story adventure please make sure to subscribe so you can join us again. Have a great day. Bye, my friends.